What's up guys, in this video, I wanna show you how to solve two simultaneous quadratic equations. All right, now on a problem like this, whenever you see variables like scrambled all up, like X and the Y, and you got numbers on one side, everything's like on different sides. Before you try to be able to identify, should I use substitution or should I use elimination? I would highly recommend just getting everything organized, right? So you can see like this is not organized. Like I wanna get like them to be at least in the same order. So therefore if I wanna use elimination, everything is ordered correctly. Or if I wanna use substitution, I can identify a variable that it has a coefficient of one. So in this first example, you can see that I already have a y that is set equal to one. So if I wanted to solve for y, I would just have to add one to the other side. Now is that something that is going to be possible for me to do in the second equation? And you can look at this and say, yes, it is possible in the second equation. So therefore, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna solve for y for both these equations and put them in their quadratic form. Okay, so you can see in this first example, all I did was add a one to the other side, and then I just flipped the equation around, so therefore I can read it just like this. And the second equation, I'm gonna add the x squared and subtract the five x. Okay, so now what I have is I have two quadratic equations. Now again, how could these quadratic equations intersect each other, right? There's a couple different options, right? They can intersect each other at two points, they can intersect each other at one point, or they could not intersect each other at all. Right? So I don't really know. The only thing I do know is I'm going to either have two, one, or no solutions, right? We're not looking for like three answers or anything crazy like that. Now, the idea is like, should we use elimination now that everything's organized or should we use substitution? And I think the important thing to recognize is like when we're dealing with simultaneous linear equations, substitution and elimination is, you know, sometimes depends. Like it, it can go either way. The trick I usually like to tell my students is like whenever there's a variable that has a coefficient of one, then use substitution. All the other times, go ahead and use elimination. However, when we're dealing with simultaneous equations that are not linear, I prefer to go ahead and use um, substitution as much as possible, almost all the time. I don't really want to deal with the elimination. You can use it, but in just in my opinion, it just it gives more options to make mistakes. And this example is actually really, really easy to use substitution because notice both these equations are set equal to y. So therefore, I can actually just set both these equations equal to one another. Okay, so now you can see that I just took this top equation, right, and I set it equal to the second equation. Now, I remember when you're solving a quadratic equation, what do you do? You get everything over to one side, set it equal to zero. Then you could either use factoring, completing the square, or the quadratic formula. Okay, so now you can see that I have a quadratic equation, x squared plus 6x plus 4, and now what I need to ask myself is what two numbers multiply to give me 8, right, and then add to give me a 6. Well, obviously I know 4 and 2 multiply to give me 8, and they add to give me 6, so therefore those are going to be my two solutions. I'm sorry, those are going to be my two factors. But once you apply the zero product property of setting each factor equal to zero, then you can see my two solutions are going to be x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 2. But remember what we did we're trying to find the intersection of two parabolas. This is very important, ladies and gentlemen, because we're not looking for what x is. We're looking for what x and y is. So therefore, now that we know what x is, to be able to identify the y coordinate, what we need to do is plug in the x into one of these equations. Now again, a lot of times students will say, like, which equation do you plug it into? And when you only have one equation that's solved for y, like, it's easy, use that equation. In this case, we have both of them. And I don't know what's gonna be the easiest. It all depends on, and a lot of times it doesn't matter. So just take your value and plug them into one of these equations. You're gonna get the same answer for both, right? Because that is that intersection point. So let's just go and use this bottom equation. The only reason why I'm using that is because it doesn't have the coefficient for the x squared. Okay, so in this example, just make sure when you're doing this that you plug in the negative four or whatever your value for x and for both those terms, right? So in this case, I'm gonna have negative four squared, which is going to be a 16. Negative four times a negative five is going to be, again, a positive 20. And then we'll go ahead and have a minus a seven. So therefore, that'd be, what, a 13. So this is equal to a 29. So now, that is gonna be what my value of y is. So when x equals negative four, I can say y is equal to a 29. And now I can go ahead and rewrite them as a coordinate point. Now let's go ahead and do the exact same thing for the negative two. And again, we already know what's gonna be going on here, right? We're just gonna plug this in, right? And again, you don't need to change the colors here. Negative four squared is going to be a positive four. Negative five times negative two is going to be a positive 10. And minus a seven 
And now you can see that'd be three plus four, that's going to equal a seven, very good. So now we have a negative two, and then we can say y is equal to a positive seven, right? And therefore now we can say that, okay, then we can write this coordinate point as a negative two comma a seven. So actually when we have two quadratic equations, as long as you can get them set both equal to y, it's actually not that bad of a problem. But what about when you have an equation with a x squared as well as a y squared? In the next video, that's what we'll discover. Cheers.